Hello and welcome to my weekly live. I am Emma Goddard and I hope you are doing all right this week. Um, I have had a very um, been pretty chilled weekend actually. Um, not loads going on. Um, making the most of spending some time out doing some garden bits and pieces and I did some baking today which was nice hey Kathleen and then obviously I had my class on Friday evening Saturday evening but um in the daytime it was pretty um re pretty relaxed so hey Stacy oh thank you for sharing very sweet um, this evening, I thought I would share with you um, the sea turtle stamp set. This one wasn't on my radar, um, despite being um, coastally. Um, this one here. Um, but I've seen some really lovely things and I was really inspired to get the stamp set and have a play myself. So, uh, Lindy, I uh, caught you in time today from Nova Scotia. Hazel's woken up in time. <laughs> oh, bless you. It's hard when you're doing night shifts, isn't it? It must be hard turning, you know, turning your days around and things. It's hard, isn't it? Oh, Bridget, not jealous. Oh, from southwest France. Lovely. Hey, Donna. Um... So tonight I thought I would share, as I say, the sea turtle stamp set. I've got a few ideas in mind. I have got out my gold um, flakes, the gilded flakes. I just keep them in my tin. Um, so I wanted to have a play with them. And um, yeah, I've die cut a couple of bits and pieces, but haven't, haven't made anything. So hey, Kim. And Sue's over on uh, YouTube as well. Um, so she says she loves the sea turtle set. Yeah, me too. I've made a couple of cards, um, but I've given them away. Um, so I don't have them to show you. Um, so I have stamped it a little, um, but haven't, um, <clears throat> haven't obviously shared it on here. So let me um share with you it's on page 108 let me share it is here in the catalog so this just um is uh shown at 50 percent so that is 50 percent of the size and then this is shown at a hundred percent of the size but it doesn't give you a real feel for how big the turtle is so this is the turtle um so it's big um but really nice this piece here um is this big so it's big images um and then this one on this side as well is a reversible we're not using this one tonight but you can see how they've got kind of the um shadowing and that is the reverse of the stamp rather than those extra stamps in the set so um yeah that's where it is in the catalogue page 108 um and so i thought we could stamp a little bit with this so i wanted to play with the gilding flakes and so I'm not sure that we'll use all of these that I play with, but I just wanted to see how it would turn out. This is a little one there as well, but I wanted to see how it would turn out. Um, let me do some on um, some dark paper as well. So we'll do some on. Uh, Nostagoon and Pretty Peacock maybe. and maybe the Wild Wheat as well so we'll try the 
three. Hello, hello, everybody. Right, let's, um, as I say, not necessarily going to use all of these on the cards tonight, but I just wanted to have a play and see how these turn out with the in uh, gilding flakes. So I'll just have that the right way up. So I've got one on there. I might just do a couple at a time, otherwise we're gonna um, Oh, that's nice on there, isn't it? Right, I have got out the heat and stick. <laughs> Paul says you don't want to do leaves tonight. Uh, well, I did a few over the weekend. So I, th I thought I'd give that a little rest. <laughs> I should do some more leaves, really. I don't think I did enough. <laughs> We use the um, bird bird's eye view for class, and um, the lovely little leaves in that set. We were cut, we were cutting a few out at class, just a few. Uh, all right, this is the heat and stick powder. So this is not uh, this is not white or clear embossing powder. It's the heat and stick glue. Um, so I'm going to do one on the white and one on the wheat and then I'll come back to the blues once we have tested this. Um, uh, welcome, welcome to everyone joining. So this is the heat and stick. You don't want to overheat this for too long otherwise it goes the opposite way of what you want which is it dries it out and doesn't then stick so i'm hoping i'm gonna try both at once you can see it goes really fast compared to the embossing powder it goes really fast so um right let me lid on that and then I'm going to get some gold gilding flakes out. Uh, oh, Wendy says her internet connection is not good there. You're going to watch as long as you can. I've got a huge piece of gilding flake. They're normally not this big uh, in the packet. That is enormous. I'm going to use some of it on there. I'm going to use going to say more is more <laughs> and then I'll sweep it back into the pot um, so I'll just make sure the lid is on the Versa mark and I've just a little <laughs> just a few okay let's give that a little push onto there and the same on this one I have a feeling that the embossing on this one's going to come out better. Okay. So we'll just gather up the majority of the loose flakes. Ooh, good job I haven't got a fan going. And I'm going to put them back in my pot. It looks a bit of a mess at the minute, but I'm hoping by the time I brush this down, it will all come. So I've got a blank little mini um, brush. And we're just gonna give that a rub onto the turtle. So I can give that a fairly good rub to really get those flakes to go. Away. I have gold over. I should have done the gold one last, really. That's not bad, actually. I wonder if um, I should have stamped a solid image underneath 
I might add a little bit of ink. I wonder if that will. Hmm. That's come up beautifully. I much prefer it on the cardstock, actually. Doesn't that come out nice? So that's on the wild wheat and it's really super shiny. Um, I think I've just got a better stamped image. I think that had not quite stamped quite so well on the white, whereas on here it's come up beautifully. Um, so, um, could maybe um, do some gold on the white with the water bits. I have gold everywhere. Oh my goodness. Right. Let me. See if I can just scoop that to one side. I'll deal with that later, or the Hoover will. <laughs> I think it would look great on Pretty Peacock. Should we do a Pretty Peacock one as well? Well, we've got it. We've got. I've got the cardstock here. We could do a Pretty Peacock one as well, just so you can see what that will look like. So we'll buddy that. You want to make sure you've got a good amount of Versa Mark. Mine's a fairly new ink pad, actually, as well. Clean with the um, Versamark and then the heat and stick. So just get that. is on. Give us a little heat. I don't want to go over it for ages, otherwise it will bits of gold. is so shiny it's amazing I haven't used it in a little while and I must get that back out and um, I'll just rub that away and give it a rub amazing on the pretty peacock doesn't it that looks very cool um no louise it's heat and stick um powder so it's like um it heats like a glue so um it heats so that you can um, stick that onto it um uh, so i have going to cut these out and um, 
<laughs> yeah, my, yeah, my my husband's just walked in while I'm doing my live. He, he, he's uh, uh, good job the camera's not pointing that way. <laughs> he was, uh... Right, let me cut these out. Uh, Louise says, haven't used mine in ages. Uh, uh, it's a bit messy, but I don't mind. Don't mind a bit of mess. It's, uh, you don't want to use it while you've got a fan running on your desk. If it's a very warm day and you've got a fan going, <laughs> Steve's being cheeky, Hazel, is what Steve's been up to. Mm. Mm. Yes, uh, Right, these don't have dies, so I'm going to cut this out. And then we'll have these to put onto our cards. I'm going to have all the techniques tonight because I want to play with some alcohol, um, like blending technique as well. But um, we'll see. We might end up just with lots of bits and no card if I end up doing that. So we'll see how time goes. I do feel like I need to get the hoover out and hoover my desk, though. There is just gold everywhere. But can you? <laughs> just. <laughs> uh, there is gold all over my desk. Good job my desk was nice and tidy before I started, so it shouldn't be too difficult to clear up. Sparkly, sparkly. How cool is that? There we go. I've got a gold turtle. And then we'll do the my old wheat one as well. Definitely takes on that gold tone, doesn't it? Um, the, the kind of a matte wild wheat could be kind of like a matte gold colour. I immediately knew that I would like working with this colour but I think it's one that's possibly had to people are having to warm up to a little but it is lovely um, it just pairs really it's like surprising what it pairs with it's um the colour combinations that it will go with okay those turtles look at them they almost look pinky in the light don't they so lovely they're kind of nice together like that all right so that was my gold gold i think i'm gonna bin that one not so keen on that one um you've got to try these things haven't you you've got to try them out and see if they work i'm gonna see if i can scoop up some of that gold So it's a little bit less. Ooh. Right, let's uh, let's do some. Oh, I'll tell you what, I won't ruin the surprise. I won't. I won't. I won't show the cards that I made during my class because I do keep all my cards that I make during classes exclusive for those that have purchased the class. I don't share them on my blogs. I don't share them on my Instagram. But um, we did make a fun fold, and I will share the fold in a completely different colourway. And I think this would be perfect for the turtles. So I'm going to bring in some pretty 
peacock cardstock. And I'm going to try and remember these measurements off the top of my head or see if I can find my instructions very quickly. Right, so this cardstock's eight inches wide um, and um, the height can be the height of whether half a sheet of cardstock, whether you're A4 or US. Um, letter, so we're going to score at two and six. I'm going to go fairly quick on this, so um, if you want to, to um, grab the sizes of this, you might want to watch the replay. Um, I'm then going to pop it at the one inch and cut between the two score lines. And again on the other side. And then I'm going to score at three and five between the cut lines. And I'm going to score at four on the outside edge, so only on the little panel at the top and bottom. So we have then this. This card, which is a cool um, fold. And I'm thinking that the turtle could sit in the middle. And that would look very cool. So I'm just going to see if I can find some paper. That's the piece I am after. So this is from the birthday bright and beautiful paper and so um the paper i'm gonna cut in a minute i'm gonna put some white panels down the side i've got, I've got loads of scrap pieces this size from off cuts when i did my retreat when i was cutting a particular thing so i've got a nice amount of these in my scrap pile they're perfect for this kind of thing um so mm -hmm. I'm just going to cut the panels to sit in there. So that was in centimetres, 14 and a half by 4.7. So I'm then going to cut this to uh, 14 by 4.3 so there we go so we've got pretty peacock base with <clears throat> um pretty peacock dsp down the side and then we'll just have a white panel in the middle there. So um, that panel, uh, nine by 4.7, I think. Nine. About 4.7, there. <clears throat> so we could stamp this with some of this beautiful and we'll go Lost Lagoon because it's a little bit lighter than the Pretty Peacock and we can stamp that, love this image, bubbly water. Going across the centre panel. Um, so we can glue those on.
and that paper does all the watercolouring ombre hard work for you. That paper is just so beautiful on the back. There's a few sheets in that pack that have got that same pattern but different colours. Um, and it's, um, yeah, really, really pretty. Uh, we have that, and then this one can glue in that middle panel. And there, and then this, look, can just sit across the middle there. How cool is that? Because it's still going to fit when the card is closed to go in envelope. I think I'm going to pop it on some dimensionals. Uh, Judy says, love the blues. Isn't it gorgeous? The pretty peacock is such a lovely colour. All right, I'm just going to rest that. I'm not going to peel those dimensionals up at the minute because I have die cut um, in advance a few bits and bobs from... Um, what was it from? It was from the textured floral dies. So nothing, um, uh, nothing that you would expect to go with sea stuff. Um, but the textured floral dies goes with this stamp set. So the bundle goes together. So those are the outline dies that cut those flowers out. But look at these cool. So this is definitely more floral, I think. But I looked at these and I thought this piece here, although it definitely could go with florals, and this piece here, I thought these looked quite um, seaweed or like pretty seaweed. Um, so I thought that would be pretty cool. Sue says, which paper is that? Which DSP pack is that? It is the bright and beautiful DSP pack. So, so it's the one that goes with the balloons, um, the one that we used with the um, birds. So it is this DSP pack. So there's all there's a load in there that have got that like different um, tonal um, pattern in different colours. So we've got bubble bath and all sorts in there, but um, the pretty peacock is one of them. So that is where that's from. Um, yeah, and then these pieces are from the textured florals. So I thought these could be pretty cool. So I've cut a few out, some in vellum and some in just white, because I thought I could blend them or do something with them. That's what I thought. I thought they could add a little bit of texture. Um, it has all the new core colours. It it's just a fabulous pack, isn't it, Paul? It's got so many um, great colours in. Shall we add a little bit of blending to these, or shall we leave them white? Mm. I am tempted to blend a little uh, <clears throat> I don't know whether to bring a different colour in though or whether to keep it all Lost Lagoon um, I do. Let's, I've got more white ones so if we decide that the Pretty Peacock is not what we want this to uh, sorry Lost Lagoon if we don't want the Lost Lagoon on there, then I've got more white cut. So let's just add a bit of blending. Look at those. Love them. So just add a little bit of water. Oh, where is my brush? Here. we just add a little touch of water onto those just gives it a nice splatter and that'll dry up 
Right, that's got there. I think if we glue dot them on, it just gives some texture from behind there, doesn't it? So the star of the show is going to be that turtle. And then we can have those on there. So I am. Um, Add that with a little glue dot. Ah. Hi, Annette. Hi, Laurel. Welcome, welcome. Right, let's peel them off and pop that. I wonder if we need a little. Do we need it? does need a little. Needs a little gold, doesn't it? Do a little zhush of gold as well. It's going to be one of those nights where the kitchen sink will be thrown at the cards. I'm in that kind of mood. <laughs> it's um, I'm in the mood for techniques, and I've got paste on my desk as well. I've not used it yet, but. I even got the paste out ready. I thought, well, oh, that'll be maybe an option. I used some paste during the demo demonstrator creativity now event, and actually, I thought, gosh, I haven't used haven't used paste in a while either. And so it had me thinking, I thought I might get that out. Pull those loops off to the side. There. If I thread that through, kind of sit under the leaves a little bit. Right, okay, I think we're nearly there. Uh, we want maybe a little sentiment though, don't we? Shall we put on there? There's no sentiments in the sea turtle set. I do have some preheat embossed um, little happy birthdays on my desk in my little pile of scrap bits. So that might be the sentiment that gets put on so that we can crack on and we can then make a second card because we are just after nine o'clock already. What do we reckon? I could just sit there, couldn't it? Um, and the beauty of that card is that when you fold it up, it's still going to sit um within the envelope width so it will still sit like that um it will be the right size for going in the envelope for posting so there you go uh Annette says, is this meant to be a masculine card? Because I think it would be perfect for that. I think so too, actually. Yeah, very much so. Wasn't intent, wasn't necessarily intended. I wasn't thinking, oh, I need to make some masculine cards. But um, yeah, definitely think it could be um, a more masculine card. So there you go. So you can just put sort of white panels on the back to write your sentiment and then you are away. So that is one. Let's do a second. So um, I was um, wanting to play with some vellum and some alcohol blending. Let me, if you can hear, my husband's being very good. He's clearing, he's emptying the dishwasher and putting all the dishes away, but he's been very noisy in doing so. So if you can hear it clattering, um, it is um, 
my husband being super helpful <laughs> as he always is um but um yes it's very noisy sounds like he's playing the drums with the pots and pans uh do you think i oh know he's been a superstar but um yeah it's um been a very noisy superstar <laughs> um right do i think it was put on an a2 envelope janet is your a2 envelope like your normal card envelope i should know that really if it is in which case yes it would um you just need to cut your cardstock eight inches by the height of your standard card base to start with and then it will fit yes it absolutely will Right, let's do some alcohol blending with some blends. So um, I haven't practiced this. I haven't done this in a very long time. Um, and it was very popular at one point. Lots of people were doing it. But you just add some different colours with your blends. And then we're going to add some alcohol. So what colours have I put on so far? Dark Pretty Peacock and Dark Night of Navy. And then this is Dark Pool Party. I might need a darker colour on that, actually. Uh, but we'll see. Let's add that in. That's dark pool party. And then we'll see how that goes. So we've got our um, blends just scribbled on there. And then I have got some alcohol, um, strong alcohol in a spritzer. And I'm just going to spritz very gently. get some movement on the page. I also need to open a window at this point. Because <laughs> it's very stinky. And that, uh, yeah, I've just realised that. <laughs> it's like, oh. Uh, Very cool. Because it's, it's mesmerising, isn't it? Watching that move. And the magic happens. Look at that. It's just... Um, get all different... Um, patterns then and then you can move it around with your heat gun if you want to It is Claire, it's on vellum. So it's how awesome is that? And, um, and if I put it on some white, um, just so you can see. The background. It's going to make it even more gorgeous. So yeah, lots of fun. I'm just going to trim that a little. I'm going to take a little bit off the top and the bottom. And I am going to stick that onto a piece of white so that you can really see the colours. I'm going to stick that 
there. And pull that down. So that is going to stay on that white piece like that. And then we've got a choice. I had pre-cut a whole load of these. More organised than normal. I think because I wanted to do lots of techniques. I thought, oh, I'll pre-cut a couple of bits to make some decisions. But... Um, like the white I so, see you know when I try that my vellum curls into a roll and it's impossible to flatten out maybe I'm um, try taping it and that you know like painter's tape or like um a removable tape so that you have it held until it's dried a bit like you might with watercolor um if yours is particularly rolling um let's have a play right we shall Stamp some of these. I've stayed pretty much in the pretty peacock colours. Um, I was going to bring in some boho blue, misty moonlight type colours, which I think I might try. building those up and then you can turn this over and you can get sort of more solid image as well so that's the beauty of these reversibles is you can then stamp the other side as well so I might stamp off with some nice lagoon I know. I could keep more of the vellum, maybe. I wonder if I could keep... I'll cover it up on this one, I think. And then... So that is Lost Lagoon. And that is the solid image, rather than the... Um, rather than kind of speckled... See, and then you can. Oh, let's get it the right way around. I'll mix it up, it doesn't matter. Uh -huh. What do you reckon? We're going to have some turtles then swimming behind. I don't think this is the right one for it, but you get the idea. We'll do another turtle swimming underneath there. And we grab some of the sea fish, sea starfish. That's, I think these need to be embossed or perhaps in gold oh my goodness decisions decisions I think we might only um we're definitely only making two cards tonight I was going to go for three but I think it's going to be two uh let's see if we can add gold So you can see the difference when I show you this between the heat embossing and the heat flakes. Um, so that's your heat embossing, which does look quite shiny on camera, but the, the shininess of gold in real life that is more matte and that is more shiny shiny um, so 
another little starfish. Now we need a turtle, we need a sea turtle or two. And we need some uh, what colour shall we do him in? Should we do him in on the white? Oh, do you know, I slept funny last night and I pulled my neck in a funny way. It will get it will go and I've been taking um so it's not it's not super serious it's just i can't i can't turn around from my card stop very quickly so um, <laughs> uh, right. so, might want to start this in pretty peacock make it stand out a little bit more from the background or crumb cake maybe hmm. where is my mat okay, use my phone mat so pretty peacock that's stamped better and then I'll give that a clean just give it a wipe and then you can turn that over like that and that is Lost Lagoon and then we can stamp off and fill That. How cool is that? So cool. Um, just don't know if I want that in. Looks a bit lost with the, it's pretty and I'll use it on another card, but I think it looks a bit lost with the C. So I do think I might go crumb cake. And so you can go either way as we've got this on. Reversible side first. Let's give it a wipe. So Shami is your friend with these stamp sets. And then just ink it up with the crumb cake. Oh, nearly. That's cool, isn't it? That's cool. And then there is a, yes, there is. So Claire says, is there a smaller turtle in there? Yes, it's a very cute one. Super cute. Um, look, it's so sweet. And that also just reverses over and then infills. So sweet. I find you need to clean and turn it over on the block if you get the solid image. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The chamois is useful, isn't it, to have it? Um, to hand so you can just give them a wipe as you go right um, so let's cut those out and oh, sweet and we'll put these oh sweet diddy one
these kind of sets I just think perfectly pair up as well with some of the other C sets that we have. So like the shells and the um, previous the previous shells, retired sets that we've got or had. And then um, oh, what's the current Seaside Bay? We've got lots of little, lots of other sets. That I think. We previously had a seahorse in the set as well, didn't we? So you've got those. I think they make a great collection of, or a great addition. Living by the sea, I'm very drawn to these kinds of set, stamp sets. But... Um, Say, so I was going to resist the turtle. And I've seen some lovely cards, and um, I received a decorated chocolate bar um, from lovely Lisa um, with the turtles. And then it was like, oh, I'm done for now. Now I've got it in my hand and seen it in real life. I was managing to resist up until that point. Um, and then it had to come and join my stash. <laughs> um, yeah, the wild wheat turtle could look cool, couldn't it? I don't know. Could you use that one? Now I've gone to the effort of cutting that other one out. What do you reckon? I don't know. Might use that on a different card. Kind of have it. Because you've got the C on the top and the bottom, you kind of got two layers. I quite like that you could potentially have one going over the top of the other. I've got some vellumy pieces. You could definitely sit there. I kind of like that. I'm going to chop the chop that one <laughs> like ah, I don't need it on we don't need it on dimensionals I just want that sitting coming in and then I'll put some tape along the bottom edge we can stick that vellum uh, under here that might be worth just popping a little glue dot on that core <laughs> if you told to resist I know and, uh, uh, let's go put a little glue dot on that edge of that leaf just to make that kind of stick across there so that it's not falling the vellum's not falling forward and then that whole piece I'm going to put on some uh, dimension I want to make sure we get a good amount of dimensions particularly on those sides of those circles and then down the bottom edge I am um, yeah the, al the alcohols really fun. like you can have a real like play with those to get all sorts of different backgrounds okay so I've got that popped up looking pretty so far swing into the hole yes i think so like you could have it sort of off the edge there maybe sort of like i think there would be quite cute wouldn't it kind of going towards towards there i think it's quite sweet isn't it let's do that and then um 
see. I kind of like the weight as well. I don't want to like overload this. I don't want to overload it with loads of loads and loads of seaweed because it'll be no point having stamped the turtle if we're gonna load it up too much. I want that white in there and make it go that way. <laughs> Just, it, it will do that. It will go where I want it to. <laughs> it will. It will bend around like that there. I think we'll just do a little glue dot on that. That'll be fine. It will hold. Glue dots are magic. They are magic when it comes to crafting. There, right. Let's have some. That is what, a tiny, tiny, tiny dot of glue. Now, glue dot will not work on here. Tiny dot there. We need some sparkle. We need some twine. We need a sentiment. What else shall we put on here? Uh, Laurel says, love the two-dimensional look. Yeah, just having that um, space through. I know I've covered loads of the um, alcohol blended background. Um, which... Oh, that's quite sweet, actually. Bring on the cuddles. That's quite sweet with the two, with the mummy and baby. That's quite sweet. Um, birthday. I don't know if I want it so um, harsh in the black with the white. I know I've got the sentiment sitting there, but I might stamp one. Uh, what's a good sentiment set? Let's do... Uh, what have we got? What have we got? Uh, I have so many sets on my shelf with loads of sentiments. I shouldn't have this much difficulty picking something. Uh, right. Just want a birthday let's do oh. what about just a hello let's do that and then you're not waiting around all evening for me to pick a word <laughs> sorry really indecisive oh Janet you're so sweet you're so creative I've seen your drawings you are super creative too right that needs to be bigger I think actually I think it kind of gets a bit it's a bit um it's a bit drowned Kind of gets a bit swallowed up there, doesn't it? Is this hello too big? Is that hello? Too big. What about... Just for you. There you go. Look, this one's a bit bigger. Just for you. That'll do. Ooh. I managed to make an entire card and then I can't choose what words to put on it. Shouldn't be this tricky. <laughs> uh, 
just for you. Oh boy, oh boy, do I have a desk to clear up after this live. Oh my goodness. There is blends, there is gold flakes everywhere. It's been worth it, hopefully. I've enjoyed playing with this set. Right. Just for you. I think this needs to go on like a crumb cake card base, maybe, or something like that. Let's do. Spoil for choice is the problem. You're absolutely correct, Gillian. It's a it's um a, a dilemma, isn't it? When you too many to pick from, it is a nice problem to have. Uh, right, just for you i just felt that the black um happy birthday i liked it on the other card because it was a bit darker but where this has got quite a lot of white space i just i don't know just felt like it wasn't quite sitting right let's do some twine And we'll pop the twine on. With a glue dot. I can just tuck under there. And then we need some sparkles. We need, oh. Uh, adhesive sequ adhesive backed sequin trio comes with a clear kind of pearlescent, which is pretty. Um, very burst, which you can tell has been my favourite. And then the pretty peacock. Ah, oh, Donna, you're very welcome. <laughs> Needs a bit more just for your, your 76th birthday. Ah, oh, I will. I will try and remember, Hazel. Not your birthday, but I'll try and put this card to one side. <laughs> uh, let's make sure there's enough sparkle for Hazel. Because I know she loves some sparkle. Let's put some clear on there as well, just to be sure. There. And maybe... Uh, a little splatter of some Wink of Stella. Can't go wrong with a bit of Wink of Stella. Right. Uh, give me sparkles, sparkles, sparkles. Let's do, should we do Pretty Peacock Base or Crumb Cake? What should we have? Choices, choices. Pretty Peacock or Crumb Cake. Oh, I think Pretty Peacock has the edge, doesn't it? I'm, I'm not really giving you a choice now because I really like Pretty Peacock. So if anyone really liked the Crumb Cake, then um, I'm already on my way to chopping the Pretty Peacock. That just really pops on that background, doesn't it? It um, stands out a little bit more. Um, there we go. I'm just going to glue it down because it's got the dimensionals between those two layers. So it's got between the vellum and the top layer. Right, let's add the glue. And then we just need a little inside piece. What to be in white, and we can give that a little stamp with the um, C, uh, which is here. Plus the goon. Oh, 
blue. Oh, blue. And pop some crumb cake. Uh, where is my crumb cake? Can I put it back? Nope. Crumb cake, crumb cake, crumb cake. Where are you? It won't be crumb cake then. It'll be something else because I've lost my crumb cake. A minute. Let's do stamp off pecan pie because I can't find my crumb cake. <laughs> it was here and now it is not. Uh, let's stamp off the pecan pie. Starfish. Uh, I don't know. I want the crumb cake. I'm going to leave that inside. I'm going to do that inside um, after my live because I really do want the crumb cake. The pecan pie is okay. The crumb cake can't be far away. It's just not here with my ink pads. So um, it'll be around somewhere. Right, let me clear this off the desk. And for those who have joined a little later, you can see the original the first card that we made and so there is that one and we made a fancy fold with a gilded flaked um sea turtle to start with so we made this one so very pretty peacock colors tonight um <laughs> he also says, I'm glad I woke up in time. I'm glad you woke up uh, to have the evening joining us. So, um, Paul, I did cake baked. I also made, um, we had two or three bananas on the side that were well past their best. And so I made a um, banana loaf cake and some banana muffins as well. So um, they um, uh, went down very nicely. Oh, the muffin one of the muffins went down very nicely with a cup of tea this afternoon um so yes um i enjoyed doing my baking this morning so i was doing that so i'll take some proper photos of these and i'll share them on my blog um and out in my newsletter um if you're not subscribed for my newsletter um then there is a link on my um blog to do so um and also on the top of my instagram links you can find a link to sign up to my newsletter there um, and you will hear about classes and um, upcoming lives and things like that through my newsletter, as well as um, inspiration into your inbox. Um, I hope you have had um, a lovely weekend and I hope you have a lovely week coming up. And I will see you again next Sunday for some more creating. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to be using. I might might sneak in a few Christmas cards with some of the online exclusive papers. Um so um yeah but we will see what um sunday brings ah oh, you're welcome cherry um thank you everyone and i will see you all next week take care for now have a wonderful week bye